Today's session uh, is going to look at the role of uh, Hoshin Canary uh, in deploying uh, business strategy. And uh, this is uh, an important session to start with because uh, strategy is always uh, the number one focus and it is the number one area that uh, has to be triggered off uh, in order to deliver uh, sustainable performance. And I think it would be useful at the onset to understand a little bit what the origins of Hoshin are and what is its relationship to total quality management. Perhaps a useful quote to start with from a previous chairman and uh, chief executive officer of Procter and Ga uh, Gamble who said that uh, total quality management does not guarantee that your company can produce uh, winning strategies. Um, it is understood, therefore, that winning strategies have to come from the minds of uh, effective leadership. Uh, this is an important point because the emphasis on the role of leadership is really to produce a set of deliverables. And this is what we can equate uh, successful leadership with. Uh, number one is uh, to have uh, some very clear beliefs and objectives which are well articulated in the form of uh, a mission and vision statement. Those visions and missions have to be translated if, uh, into effective strategies and to have to have uh, the supporting plans to enable them uh, to be actioned and um, uh, delivered. Uh, another key critical factor is to have identified some key performance indicators or critical factors of success which drive the performance of critical processes and activities and tasks. And all of this has to be underpinned with, with the right management structure that need to affect the strategy. Uh, the icing on the cake, of course, has got to be the degree of alignment and congruence which is delivered through engaging people, getting them to participate and empowering them through continuous improvement and using the plan, do, study, act cycle. The definition of Hoshin planning really comes from uh, two words put together. Hoshin means um, in Japanese a shining metal, a compass or uh, a pointing needle or direction. And Kanri uh, means management or control. So it is really about the systematic management and control of uh, alignment, uh, of uh, vision, and of uh, a clear direction of a business organization. So Hoshin planning uh, is a process by which performance can be improved continuously. It is the mechanism by which we can deploy visions, missions, and uh, strategies. And it is the mechanism by which we can engage um, all people in the organization at the top level and at the junior level. And it is the means by which we can convert strategic objectives into actions and into uh, plans. It is also the means by which we can close the loop and evaluate the feedback of the results of performance achieved and by which we can put in place a continuous improvement process that engages the organization in a dynamic way to continuously improve. A useful definition from AT&T, one of the pioneers of uh, Hoshin planning in the West, and that is um, uh, policy deployment or Hoshin planning as far as they're concerned is a customer focused management approach which is aimed at planning and executing breakthrough improvements in business performance. The origins of Hoshin go back to the early 60s. Um, it was first of all uh, the company Komatsu that used a very crude form uh, of uh, uh, Hoshin deployment through a fishbone diagram and uh, that was the basis of establishing cause-effect analysis and identifying the breakthrough areas for improving their business. By the mid-60s, uh, Bridgestone um, the, made a significant contribution by um, adding uh, the control and management side of Hoshin 
and they went on to win the Deming Prize in 1968. Uh, from 65 to 75, uh, the uh, in a new innovation based on the production of matrices, uh, there where there is the, uh, the interface between targets and uh, the means, uh, target to target relationships, means means um, uh, relationships, or the how and how relationship, uh, really made um, Hoshin more applicable and more attractive as a process. Uh, this was followed by a period where the emphasis was done on um, using goals and measures to drive the matrices more dynamically. And uh, Dr. Yoji Yakao, uh, who uh, was uh, one of the gurus uh, pioneering uh, Hoshin Kanri in the 60s, introduced the principle of catchball, uh, which is the principle by which targets and goals are negotiated at uh, various levels. Uh, producing lock-in and producing commitment and therefore producing uh, total alignment. In the early 80s, uh, Hewitt Packard implemented uh, Hoshin planning in an integrated fashion uh, through their company-wide quality control management approach and therefore it was the first attempt that linked Hoshin planning to total quality management. And subsequently um, uh, the integration of Hoshin to the business uh, placed emphasis on daily management, uh, reviews, uh, monitoring, and uh, basically the development of action plans. Toyota in 85, for instance, added the process and the cross-functionalism uh, objectives to the Hoshin matrices, and therefore goals have uh, started to be cascaded not in a silo fashion, but uh, in a cross-functional uh, process-based approach. By the late 80s, um, many okay, Japanese companies who have won the Deming Prize have demonstrated how easily they have been able to integrate uh, Hoshin with strategic planning and how basically the cascade um, delivered uh, an approach that focused on a multi-project uh, management basis, managing the whole portfolio of projects and creating uh, communication um, effectiveness and the review and monitoring of daily management activity. All of this was done through one system. So um, the difference between Hoshin planning and strategic planning is that the former places more emphasis on the cascade and deployment of strategy rather than the development of strategy per se. And the usefulness of this approach, therefore, is that senior managers have the opportunity basically to uh, interface the what side of strategic planning with the how uh, and therefore ensure that strategies can become effective. And this is critical because in the West, uh, and certainly until about seven, eight years ago, most strategies tended to fail because there was no deployment mechanism. And many studies reported uh, as many as 70% of strategies not being affected uh, and therefore remaining as blueprints. What are the key elements of Hoshin planning, therefore? One is to create uh, a three to five year uh, vision and mission which really describe the direction that the organization uh, needs uh, to head towards, hence the needle, hence the compass that the word Hoshin uh, emphasizes. Secondly is to identify some vital few goals which need to be pursued, actioned and followed up on a yearly basis. Goals um, have to have targets and goals have to have measures to track them to ensure that they are achieved and this is the third element that needs to be borne in mind. Fourthly, uh, goals and targets have to have implementable strategies which identify the capabilities that need to be engaged within the organization, the key drivers of performance and also to identify through affinity diagrams, for instance, what are the barriers to achieving those goals. Fifthly, these measures and targets have to be integrated with the strategies 
and they have to um, reflect some milestones of achievements and therefore enable action plans to be uh, ensued. The cascade mechanism is one of the key features of Hoshing and that means that one level uh, has uh, to represent the means by which uh, we determine the goals and objectives of uh, the subsequent level and in a family tree type uh, of approach all parts of the organization can be engaged and can be locked in. By having this um, catch ball principle upward and downward negotiations and bartering can take place using facts and using uh, performance outcomes uh, and this will engage uh, the organization fully and it will uh, ensure that um, its um, capability is deployed optimally. And of course ensuring that uh, people's performance uh, is measured in terms of their representation of the processes and the activities that they represent and that they are uh, a voice uh, to be uh, included both at the planning stages of uh, Hoshin and at the implementation and review stages. The achievement of uh, the goal cascades uh, can only take place if we have a review and monitoring mechanism to close the loop and these um, achievements have uh, basically to have a yearly end review and uh, which will uh, culminate into the development of the following year's planning process and henceforth the process can continue to deliver long-term objectives and the three to five year vision and mission of the organization. What are the TQM principles therefore that support Hoshin? Uh, one uh, aspect which is very powerful is uh, using the root cause analysis principles which really uh, identify what are the key drivers of organizational performance and what are the barriers and hence linking the hows and the whats together in order to deliver objectives optimally. Number two is the importance of setting measures and targets. Without measurement there is no improvement. This is a classic saying. So therefore by having this discipline of defining tangible measures, outcomes of the strategies can be monitored and um, uh, top management can ensure that the organization is on track with its uh, strategic direction. The third element perhaps, and this is the spirit of quality improvement, is to have continuous review using measures, uh, developing action plans, tracking progress and uh, uh, having corrective action teams, process improvement teams, uh, sponsoring projects basically to deal with deficiencies and to close performance gaps. And finally to have uh, at the heart of uh, driving uh, uh, the delivery of strategic objectives, the Deming Plan Do Check Act, by uh, reflecting uh, the outcomes for uh, the year and then uh, putting in place a cycle of uh, planning, doing, checking and acting in order to capture the learning, uh, refining and redefining the goals and steering the strategies further forward uh, for the subsequent planning period. As uh, this saying goes, um, uh, what gets measured gets better, gets improved, but what gets measured and reported on gets better, faster. This is really the belief that has made Hewitt Packard use Hoshin effectively uh, over the years and uh, basically uh, to win prestigious quality awards and to create competitive advantage with this powerful method. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, I, I want to show you um, uh, an integrated management model which really encompasses uh, that everything that uh, I have talked about. I think uh, perhaps when you are considering uh, Hoshin planning there are three elements uh, which must be taken into account. Uh, through this slide you can see at the top uh, there is um, uh, uh, development there which we call the strategic planning zone. Uh, there is nothing new there uh, because strategic planning um, in a sense 
works on uh, developing the vision and the mission of the organization, identifying the key performance indicators and the key objectives, and then doing external and internal analysis uh, to identify the competitive gaps and therefore to uh, define what the organization wants to do, where it needs to go in order to fulfill its strategic objectives. There is something called the TQM zone and basically TQM is the membrane by which we enable effective uh, strategies to happen and it is about engaging with process improvement, process optimization uh, on a functional daily uh, basis. Uh, TQM is about incrementalism, it's about plan, do, check, act. Uh, it uh, optimizes rather than sub-optimizes and through engaging uh, TQM in this way, um, the strategic objectives can be um, enabled um, and um, uh, the organization will stand every chance uh, to have uh, them delivered. The third contribution comes from Hoshin and we call this uh, the Hoshin zone. Now Hoshin works top down and bottom up. Uh, top down basically uh, by cascading the goals and creating corporate alignment and engaging everybody within the organization uh, in order to deliver the strategic objectives. Bottom up, however, it is about um, influencing the optimization of process redesign, process breakthroughs, uh, the enabling of uh, innovation activity and the delivering of gap closures and uh, the creation of competitive advantage. I hope that you have found this uh, session very useful. Uh, good luck with this and uh, thank you for your attention.